All right, guys, fuel rail is repaired, rebuilt, and whatever you want to call it. So I went with the uh, Mopar fuel rail clamps. Uh, I think they were new old stock. Rubber was plenty pliable, and I, when I put them on, I applied some seal all to the rubber. Anyway, that seemed to work. And I've got these orange-colored Mopar injectors that came off of my my spare motor, my parts motor. Anyway, they've got only 111,000 on them versus what the 272,000 the others have. And then over here, we reused the original Quick Connects, and we put new high-pressure fuel line. This is quarter inch, and this is five sixteenths. And then we've got some high pressure fuel hose clamps on both ends. Now, I cut this with like a sawzall blade. Like I just, you could put a vice grip on it, but I was too lazy to find one. I just go by hand. Because you don't want to, I don't know, start your vehicle on fire because there's still fuel in these lines. This one in particular. Or you could drain the fuel out of it and. You know, take a cutoff wheel and just zip the, uh, what are they, the crimp connects that came with them. Anyway, that's the next step done. Now I'm going to lay the wire harness in, and then I'll be able to plumb the new intake on. Alright guys, and maybe a first ever on YouTube, at least I've never seen it. I, uh, I rebuilt the temp sensor with some uh, 220 grit sandpaper. It was like, you know, corroded green color. I don't know, it won't focus. Come on. Focus. Yeah, yeah, it was like corroded and green. As you can see, hints of it. But I took some 220 to it, now she's all shiny. So now we're going to throw that guy in. Installed. I think it's a, I think that was a 13 16th. Anyway, I don't have my ratchet, allegedly. Um, so I'm going to install that. And then I'm going to finish up. I was in the middle of putting this new water hose on the for the water pump off of the, I don't know where the thermostat bolts in. So we're going to finish that up. Finish that up. And then what did I say I was going to do? I was going to run the wire harness and, Yeah. Yeah, that, and I think before I do the wire harness, I'm even going to do the plug wires off the backside so they're up over here. I'll bring you back with something. Told you I'd bring you back with something. I accidentally, I think subconsciously, did myself a favor here. So, I was at Scrapyard a couple days ago after work. And I was looking at this uh, Gen 3, I think it was a 99 Grand Voyager. And it was a really rust-free vehicle, like it's a clean one. And I was looking at it and I happened to notice it had a good grommet on the back. And I'm like, oh, I'll take that grommet for one of my third gens. And the wiper arm was all brand new and the wiper motor was new. So I assume it's, it must have had it serviced at some point and replaced and they found a, found a grommet that fits these because apparently these are unobtainium. In fact, I know they're unobtainium because I could never find them. Anyway, I grabbed the I grabbed the motor because it was brand new. I grabbed the grommet and I grabbed the arm. I wasn't even thinking that this didn't have a wiper arm on it. And obviously the grommet's bad because it's this vehicle is what like 30 something years old. Anyway, I think this grommet's gonna fit and this wiper arm is gonna fit too. So I just got myself a wiper arm and grommet for this one. So that worked out pretty sweet. Anyway, I'm going to try to look up the numbers on this. This is what the numbers are on this one. It's, what is that, 379-9824. And then on the other side, it's got a... Here, let me... Three... Focus on it. Three six one one nine, and then a little three in a star. Anyway, this will fit first gens. I know it'll fit second gens because 
the second gen and the third gen, I think, are the same motor. Anyway, so they're all the same motor, so this will fit your first, second, and thirds. I don't know if it'll fit a fourth gen or not, but that's sweet. Too bad. I wonder if I couldn't get that on, you know, with the wiper on. I'll probably have to take that all off and put it on that way, but if I do that, I might as well put the... I don't think I can put the new motor on because the pigtail's going to be different, but this motor's probably fine. Anyway, I got a wiper arm and a grommet. Anyway, I'm super happy I did that. Oops. Okay, so I'm getting ready to, you know, get the thermostat bolted back in, and I'm like, well, there ain't very much sealant surface here, so I'm like, I'm going to go downstairs, and I think I've got another uh, housing for the thermostat. And I'm like, you know, and I found it. I brought it up here and I'm looking at it. This is off of a Gen 2 and this is off of Gen 1. So between the first and second generation, they flipped which piece the uh, the recessed piece was on. Because on the, the newer version, Gen 2 and 3, the recess is actually on the lower intake where those bolts to. And then, which means that the upper piece right here for the Gen 2 and 3 would be flat. But apparently on the Gen 1s, the intake is flat. And the housing has the recess in it. Isn't that neat? That would have... I don't think that would have bolted down right. That would have not been good. Anyway, good catch. Hmm. Guess I have to use this one. I'm going to sand that up real good make sure that's got a good sealing surface i guess the whole thing all the way around is there's not much to it we'll uh we'll clean that up all right guys gonna call it for the night so today we got the new fuel rail in i uh i put the new idler on i put the water pump pulley on we got the new fuel lines on and then what I just spent the last forever doing was, it's not on here yet, but the new power steering pump had to press the pulley onto it. That right there was a royal pain in the ass. Anyway, I used a really long bolt, like six washers, or uh, like six nuts to press it in. Anyway, it worked. I've got a photo of it, but with the impact gun. And it's and it sits flush with the pulley, but it it was tough without the proper tool. But then that goes on next ish. Well, why the hell didn't you guys say anything? That pulley's on backwards, and I don't have the puller to get that back off. So we are going to use the one off of my spare motor after all and we're gonna put this one over here for another day deal with that later well guys I got it started I got the three main bolts started I still got to get the uh, bracket on the back side in and started but I'm gonna snug those up pretty close anyway so I mean, we got her whipped All right guys, power steering pump is in and tightened down real good and it lines up perfectly. Who'd have knew if the pulley was on the right way, it would uh, it would line up. Anyway, now I feel like I did something today and I can go inside because I am freezing my, my butt off. Yeah, but look at that, those all line up real nice. So, now that that's in, before I button up any of this, I wanna be able to get at the uh, the line there that goes into the rack because that's hard to get at from the from the bottom we think well it's not too bad but I think with this open up top I'll be able to get at it too because I gotta put the new uh, pressure line in I already I've got the the uh, return line plumbed in onto the pump on this side I just gotta hook it in over down there which is no big deal but uh I think I'm gonna call it today because it's freaking cold and windy and freezing. But it worked out well because the ground below is actually frozen and not water, so I didn't like get soaked down there.
So maybe I will. I might look at these lines. I, I'm not going to do anything more than the lines, but maybe I'll, I'll look at the lines quick. All right, well, I got the low pressure line on down here, and I got a hose clamp on it. Now, the high pressure line on the rack down there, you can't really see it here. You know what I can do? Um, here. Just kidding. I was going to try to use flash, but it says my phone is too cold to use flash. Anyway, you can't see it, but down there on the rack, there's two fittings that go into it. The fitting that's the highest fitting is your high pressure one. What I'm going to do since I'm replacing the line is I'm going to take a pipe cutter and I'm going to cut that off so it's straight and I'm going to take a deep well socket and put it on there and crack that loose. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow or whenever I get to it. Probably tomorrow at some point. But yeah, I'm going to cut that line and I'm going to put a socket on it because it's, it's on there good. Well, here's our line that we have to cut. Now, I'm hoping I can get that guy in there most of the way and kind of go back and forth around it. And that way I can cut it off straight so I can put a socket on it and get it off. So we're gonna we're gonna try to get this guy. This is like a like a copper like pipe cutter for like plumbing. Anyway, that should work just fine. We're, we're gonna try that real quick and we'll see where we get. Okay, so we're cut through most of it, like the bottom half, like we're cut through it. I'm hoping I can flex that and bend that off with like a vice grip because I can't get a full swing on it because of the low pressure return fitting below it. But we're gonna get on there with a vice grip. We're gonna try to break that off and we'll see if that works. But I've got it mostly cut loose. Otherwise I'll come in with like a pipe cutter or like a snipping tool and just snip it. All right, guys. Yep, bent it off with the pliers. So I had it mostly cut. Anyway, I got a deep well, 18 millimeter socket. We're gonna try that. I'm gonna need two hands probably, but I figured it was worth a shot. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. So obviously you can do that when you're in the old line. And the new line should go in easy enough with a wrench that, you know, cause it's new and not seized to the rack. So we're gonna try that. Oh, you guys are out of focus. But I got it. Chill out. So it's really, it's like a wind tunnel under here right now. So it's really windy, cold. But you know. Anyway, I'm gonna do this for the next 10 years. Make sure. Make sure when you're doing this that your o-ring comes out with it otherwise when you try to put your new o-ring in it's not going to seal right so let's hope the o-ring's on here now i'm on any day now and i believe the o-ring is on there so look at that we got her so we got her whip now so now we're just gonna run the new line put the new line in with the 18 millimeter wrench and then we're good to go with the power steering anyway. All right guys, got her in. So our high pressure's in here. Got the clamp on there. Then up there, we've got it in the back of the pump. So in the back of the pump, it's a 16 millimeter wrench. And then onto the rack, it's an 18. And I recommend doing this last or you will never line up your fittings. You need this kind of play to be able to line them up, and then once you get them snugged in, then you put this guy on. But anyway, it's in there right, and it's not rubbing on anything. It clears. So, power steering is done. We uh, fixed the initial problem, guys. Now we're just going to put the rest back together. Look at that. Shiny, and I left the little fitting thing on there in case. I don't think it'll leak, but in case it does, I come in here and just tweak on them a little bit. All right, guys, wires are all in. Got the fuel rail harness all plugged in. Everything's plugged in on that one. And then we've got our alternator and you know throttle body harness. That's all plugged in and plumbed in as much as I can. This uh, clips to the bottom of the intake. I got some zip ties here on 
I got this guy, oh, this, this, the heater core line in. Um, the kit I had didn't come with that gasket, so I, I made a gasket and I put some RTV on it. Sealed her up, so that should hold. I've done that before. And if it leaks, that one's easy enough to get to. But um, I used some new zip ties to zip tie these up so they're off the exhaust. And then I gotta tighten this ground down. And then I put a zip tie here to hold these all up too. Just keep them away from the exhaust. But next thing we're going to do here is, one, I'm going to tighten this up off camera. But we're going to get this out because I did, I did end up grabbing one of these from the scrapyard off that 90, that red one. Because this guy, they're tight. The throttle is, it's, I mean, I put some lubricant on it and it seemed to help a little bit. But this is, this is not a good, this is not permanent. And last thing I want is like a stuck throttle or, you know, and it doesn't look that good. So I got a nice one. All it is is it uh, you take your you take your uh, your cable off the throttle, and then there's a clip, and you, un you undo the clip on the inside here, and then you can pull that grommet off. I, you can push it from the inside, and then that comes up. And then down here, you got your vacuum control for your for your uh, cruise control. You take this 10 mil and this 10 mil, and that whole thing comes up. And then you just gotta I gotta get this vacuum line off to put the new one on it. And that vacuum line comes up and then hooks to this soft line right here, which then goes into the uh, intake. But let me, let me find a flat head. That might work. So we've got in here, kind of shift my tools out of the way. So we've got this, this guy right here, which holds your, your throttle cable in. And you got to get him unclipped. That's what I'm talking about, and it's there. If you yeah, see that, and I got it pulled back, kind of trying to here get this. Yeah, there, there, got it off the pedal. Is what I needed to do is pull this plastic piece forward, and then you can get your you pull your throttle cable and you get him off of this little clip he's in. If I can. Two-handed job, guys. Two-handed job. There, got it. See? Now we can just pull this guy off and set him off to the side. And then you can feed your throttle cable out. And so now it's off your pedal. And so back here, there's this, like, plastic C-clip. And you get this plastic C-clip off and not lose it behind the firewall. It came off by hand like that. Easy. I think it's actually, I think it is metal, but it's into rubber, this guy. And you can set him down. And now in theory, with a little bit of effort, you should be able to push this uh, through the firewall or pull it from the other side, one of the one of the two. Well, let's, let's try pull it this time. Last time I pushed it with a screwdriver, but you wanna be careful because you don't wanna, you don't wanna stab your, your rubber seal there. But we'll uh, let's see if we can pull that. Not that this one matters because I'm not saving it, but it did pull. It did pull out. No problem. So now we've got that side free, which he's clipped in here. But we're going to take him as one piece. So I'm going to get these two tens out, and then I'm going to pull the whole assembly out. So I'm going to do that real quick. But yeah, two tens, they should come off right off the battery tray. And before I put the new one in, I might as well put the new battery tray in, right? which the battery tray is, I think that's a 13 or a 15. And then there's behind this. No, actually, no, no, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's one. See it right there? There's a, there's one there. And then the one that holds the battery in. So that's just three bolts and this whole tray comes up. So we're going to do that at the same time. So I'm going to come back with this out and that out. All right, so I got it loose um, without wanting to like oh maybe I, actually actually i might have got it i was i couldn't get this out and i was gonna take the battery box off and just let you know but i think i just got it <laughs> as i'm kind of wiggling on it here yeah yeah i got it i got it guys so that's the that's how you get that off yeah otherwise i was gonna say i was just uh, take the battery box off while you're doing it we're almost there there's a i'm hooked on a 
there's a metal keeper retainer thing, and we just gotta kind of tweak it. Yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, look at that. And then there's a plug on the back of this guy. You gotta get off. And... Yeah. So I'm gonna pull that plug off, pull this out, and then I'll work on the battery tray. So there you go. Well, guys, um, you know it's bad when your your broken off bolt is smoking from the uh, heat you put on it. Anyway, apparently what I did wasn't enough. So I'm trying to get the two lower bolts off of the exhaust manifold that hold that hose up. And that failed. I didn't expect it to survive. The one over here on the driver's side, I definitely knew it was going to fail. That's what's left of the one that holds the actual cover on. And that's what the bottom one looks like. The one on the left side here, on the, or uh, passenger side had some meat to it I was able to pound an 11 mil on it but uh, it just wasn't there it just didn't survive so I think what we're gonna end up doing now is it's gonna be zip ties to the AC line when I put the new one on I was hoping that I could get that out of the manifold I was hoping but, it, well, it wasn't gonna happen. So, over here, there's a bolt that holds it up there, and yeah, it, we'll just, we'll zip tie to the AC line there, and that will work for me. Dang it, thank you guys. But yeah, that was, I had that torched hot, and it did not, did not survive. Okay guys, uh, battery tray's out. Um, these clips, they're great when they when they work. Notice how notice how shiny these are. With the two down here, that one right there snapped as I tried to spin it out, as they do when they get rusty and disintegrate. So I spent the better part of an hour cutting this guy off. And cutting the bolt off so I could or the bolt head so I could punch it out so I could put a new one of these in luckily when I grabbed the new battery tray I grabbed the the bolts and everything yeah so I this one worked but I'm replacing it so when it does get bad it's not going to so and then I figured this one broke on the radiator so I replaced both of these two that sucked. That was that was not fun. Um, so that's good to go now. Now we can put the tray back on and whatever else. Also, so I thought I had that new hard line from here for the heater core. Apparently on the Gen 2s, it is shorter than the Gen 1s. So I didn't use that. Instead, I took my other one off and I sanded it down and then I uh, painted it with rust converter. It's drying inside now where it's warm. But it wasn't leaking yet, so now that I've done that, I think we might we might get away with that. So we're waiting on that to dry. But now I can put the new battery tray in, and then I can hook the cruise up. And then by the time I do and get the radiator bolted back in and the this rad fan, and then I got the new rad fan for this side that I can bolt in. And by the time I've got that all done, that heater hose should be dry enough to put out here so there's that's now the chain of events that i hope stays that way yeah cool cool why oh, that radiator's kind of corroded it didn't drip any so we're gonna we're gonna run that i also i fixed the rust here a little bit of surface rust from like battery acid so I kind of rubbed all the paint off and then I kind of just quick went over it it's not gonna dry well because it's cold but it'll dry better than nothing what I should do while we're in here is there's a ground right here I should uh, take that off <laughs> my magnet I had a I dropped the one clip that was good in here I had to magnet it out um, nice let's 
I should take this ground off real quick and I should clean that up and put it back on. That's I'm gonna do that too. Anyway, maybe when you come back, the radiator will be in, the battery trail will be in, the cruise will be in, and that hose might be in. Let's, let's aim for that. Well, that sure looks different, doesn't it? Uh, I kind of got a lot done since we last cut. I wanted to use all the daylight I had and I kind of got in the flow of things. So we got our new battery box in. I put the battery in. I got a coolant reservoir back in. I got the radiator bolted back up with the new bracket that's not cracked. I got that at the scrapyard. Um, I got the rad in. I got the rad fan. I'm still working on this radiator fan. Um, I got two that I'm trying to make into one with the connector being broke on the one and the fan being blown apart on the other. Um, I got our throttle in and our cruise control modulator. I got, obviously, I got the intake back on. Got it all torqued down. I got the coil pack all wired up. I get this wrong once in a while. On this top row, your number one is not 135, it's 315 and then 246. I've gotten those backwards before and it would run like crap. Um, I got the vacuum line to the booster. I got all the vacuum lines in the back. I got our new PCV hooked up. That zip tie right there. The I think the like the exhaust gases or the oil coming from the intake expanded that um, vacuum hose. So I had to I put a zip tie on it. That should do us okay, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, that's. Oh, I got this upper rad hose on. I got the lower one all tightened up. I got that coolant hose that I rebuilt with some rust converter and rust, you know black paint. I got that in there. It's holding pretty good with no with no hardware. It's kind of resting on the mounting point down there, but it'll be all right. I got the oil put in it with the new filter, the new oil pressure switch. I got all, yeah, I got all the vacuum lines routed. I got all the plugins set up, hooked up. Got the ground strap done. Got that ground tightened down. I got the bracket down here for the intake back on. So the only thing I got left to do really is I got the alternator bracket, the tensioner, the alternator, and then this PCV hose. Apparently I didn't buy the right hose, so I'm missing that chunk. So I got to pick that up tomorrow. And then put the serpentine belt on and uh, the air box, and I think we're good to go. So yeah. This is looking pretty good. My hands starting to get cold because I took them off to turn my phone on. Oh, throttle body. I gotta go clean this up real quick. Get this guy ready to go. It's not that dirty to be honest, but I'm just gonna do a quick cleanup. Put that on, call it a night. Then, well, I might put the airbox on, but then I gotta get this and do this all tomorrow. That's where we're at. I'm gonna call that good. Have a good one. All right, throttle body's all cleaned and on. Intakes on. The only thing we're missing is the uh, alternator and the idler. Um, what I'm gonna try do, I think. I think I'm gonna try start it. I just want to see, and I got no belts hooked up, so I ain't gonna run it very long. I just want to see if it'll run. Make me sleep better tonight, or help me sleep better tonight. And our connections are. Pretty, pretty loose, but that might work. I got dome lights. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime it. Okay. Um, might need tighter battery connections first. Um, that might work. Right now. Nope, we have no power. Okay. I'm gonna tighten these up first and then we'll come back. Alright, throttle body's all cleaned and on. Intake's on. The only thing we're missing is the uh, alternator and the idler. Um, what I'm gonna try to do, I think. I think I'm gonna try start it. I just want to see, and I got no belts hooked up, so I ain't gonna run it very long. I just want to see if it'll run. 
make me sleep better tonight or help me sleep better tonight yeah, our connections are pretty pretty loose but that might work I got dome lights what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime it okay um, might need tighter battery connections first um, that might work try it now nope we have no power okay I'm gonna tighten these up first and then we'll come back all right we get dome lights again that down there. Actually, I don't want to turn the lights on. I'm going to prime it. Turn the fan off. We're going to see if we're leaking fuel anywhere. See any fuel? Yes, I do see fuel actually. We are leaking out of an injector. Okay. So, why you guys? Check. So we're going to turn that off. We are leaking out of an injector. Somewhere. That one's... Sorry, you guys probably can't see. I'm kind of looking here. I think we're leaking out of... Injector number five. Great. In here. I think it's leaking off the top. Oh, great. Great. Maybe I should have checked fuel pressure before I put the intake on, guys. All right, I'm going to address this, and I will maybe bring you back tonight or not, because I might be mad. All right, so I think I'm going to go back to the old injectors, which means i got to pull the top intake back off, which is in the ass. We're going to do that tomorrow. I think we'll be okay. We're going to see if it runs. I have a fire extinguisher. If it catches on fire, you're going to be very, very mad and sad. But I just want to see if it runs. It'll make me feel better. Let's try it. I got fuel. We know we got fuel to the rail. So a bunch of fuel, and we've got no start. Well, good morning, guys. So uh, I figured out why the rail leaked. A guy forgot to tighten his bolts. They were there. Um, I just finished taking them back off, but, uh, they were all hand tight. Anyway, I cranked them down and then the rail didn't leak figures, but, uh, I've been cranking it over here and I'm getting no fuel. At least I've, I'm cranking it, walking back here, cranking it, walking back here. I can't smell any fuel. I don't see any like fuel residue anywhere in here. And there's no way it evaporate in between me walking to the ignition and back so i don't think these injectors are firing now that means two things 
all six injectors were froze up from sitting who knows how long in the motor I grabbed. I didn't think it had been sitting that long. I'm, if I remember, I, I, I thought, and I could be, I could be misremembering that the uh, rotors looked like they'd been driven a little bit, like recently. But I could be wrong. Anyway, it could be all six injectors are bad, or it could be this new harness that we put in that's not charred, so I don't know why it wouldn't work. Or we could have a, I don't know, a blown fuse somewhere. Anyway, I'm going to start looking, before I pull these off, I'm going to actually, I'm going to look for the fuse for the fuel rail or fuel injectors. And we'll see if we can verify that's good. Otherwise, we're going to pull this up. We're going to put our known good injectors back in. Great. And then put it back on and see if it puts fuel down the intake. And if it does, then I'll put it back together again. And we'll see if it... uh runs nice all right so i got the rail loose and as i kind of cranked it loose it immediately popped pressure on this injector here and you know the way these work is all it is is o-rings on both sides and this little clip to hold it to the rail and then otherwise it's just the pressure of the rail pushing down to keep it from leaking um, yeah, so these pop off real easy. We're gonna spray fuel over everywhere here in a second. What I should have done is pop this valve, but whatever. We're gonna try. And it's like leaking fuel as I move it around. I'm probably gonna need new O rings again, so great. Yeah, I'm gonna wiggle these off here. There, they take a little force to like hold the rail and kind of wiggle back and forth and they'll come off and dump fuel everywhere yeah so we're gonna go back to OEM or these are OEM but they're OEM for what a 92 I had it the same they are the same I I bet you they're just stuck for whatever reason um and then we'll pour, we're gonna get new o-rings again and then we will oh yeah i'll get the pcv hose while i'm there i think that's all i need all right guys so it's been a bit here been doing some troubleshooting if you will i've got the old harness the fried one here hooked back up because we knew it worked we've got the old injectors in um, got the new camshaft position sensor hooked in, got the, this guy hooked in, still nothing, nothing. Pulled this guy off, took the multimeter on it, verified we were getting 12 volts to our coil pack, and we, we were during crank, but we were getting zero volts to the injectors. We've got, so we had 12 volts here, meaning the ASD circuit, I believe I was reading up, is working. That, the way that works is when you turn the key on, the ASD circuit sends a pulse to the pump to pressurize the rail. And then when you crank, it pulses the circuit that sends spark to here and to here. And if that wasn't working, we wouldn't have had spark here. But we have spark here, so that leads me to believe that the ECM is working. And we had no change with the, these injectors, no change with this rail. So it's not the injectors, not the rail, not our ESD circuit. That seems to be working. So it's not the ECM. And so what I ended up doing is I pulled the codes. And I can show you how to do that real quick on a OB, ODB1 system. So what you want to do, you want to turn your key on and you want to turn it to run three times within five seconds and leave it on run. And then you wanna watch these lights and they're gonna flash numbers at you. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. 
Now that is code PO322. And what that code is, is CAM or crankshaft position sensor circuit. Now we know it ran previously and the change we made to that system is a new camshaft position sensor, which is plugged in right here. So, what either happened is I installed that incorrectly or it's bad. More than likely it's bad, but we'll find out. But to be safe, because I gotta make a hour drive one way to go get them, I ordered the cam and the crank sensor. And the crank sensor is way down there under the exhaust. Same plug-in. Um, so you'll want to look for a plug-in that looks like this guy right here. And it's just a it's just a press-on fitting. So all of this BS was because of probably that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and go pick those up because it is one o'clock and the store closes at four. So I'll get there to two thirty ish, get back here about four and then slam that guy in, which now that I've got the stupid motor mount on, is going to be difficult. So I'm going to get in there with like a, see it. There's our, our bolt right there, that is it on the end of my fingertip. I gotta get in there. A uh, ratcheting wrench, I think. I'm gonna have to find a ratcheting wrench and that size. What I'm probably gonna do is buy an eight millimeter ratcheting wrench because I think that's what's, I'm gonna verify what size it is. I'm pretty sure it's an eight millimeter, so I'm gonna get an eight millimeter ratcheting wrench. I might have one, but I'm gonna look around. I'll see if I, I'm gonna find one. If I can't find one, I'm gonna buy one. And we're gonna pull that guy out put a new one in and the way those work is they gotta be spaced correctly so they come with a paper spacer on the end and so you smack them in I uh I use like a screwdriver and like a rubber ha hammer and just because you can't push it in it's tight fit you want to make sure it goes all the way in so you kind of just smack it until it's all the way in and then you tighten it so what's going to happen is when it first spins over that paper spacer is going to be sheared off and every time you install one you have to have a paper sensor so you could reuse the sensor but you gotta get a new piece of paper to stick to the end of it. Otherwise it'll be spaced incorrectly and it won't read right. Leading to the same issue we have here. And also, side problem, I put in the other injectors with new O-rings and this one leaks and that one leaks. And uh, it didn't leak after I tightened the bolts down on the rail with the old injectors. So now we're back to addressing a fuel problem. get lucky do you yeah so i'm gonna go get these new sensors get them put in we'll see if they work or not and i will uh go from there because what i'm what i'm seeing is obviously it isn't shooting fuel into the intake which causes a no run naturally okay so I did some more digging. I did end up going and making that parts run, getting that cam, that crank, and a couple more fuel injector O-rings. So I've got the rail, so it is currently not leaking. Um, apparently, the last time I put them on, when I redid them, somehow I was cutting bits off the O-rings when I was getting them up in here, which would cause them to leak. This one did it, this one did it, and I believe that one did it. But now, um, and what I've got is I've got the key on, and I'm just kind of tapping the negative onto the battery. And what it does is with the key on, it triggers the fuel pump. And so I'm listening to it, and I'm looking, and obviously it's not leaking around any of you here anymore. And I can hear it going back out the uh, return. So I think we're good here. But before I left, I took this cam sensor out because I, I wanted to test the, figure out which size bolt. It was a 10 mil. And so I got a 10 mil in there, and then I, I just, well, I've already cracked it loose, so I pulled that cam sensor out. And there's a little paper, uh, like a spacer. So when you pound that cam sensor in, it's, it's, it reads off of the uh, cam sprocket. 
and there's screws in there and it, it's a magnet it'll read them and it'll tell you when to fire your injectors and you know all that crap and spark and stuff but it's supposed to when you hammer it in it's supposed to spin around the cam and shear that paper off instead it made just a little groove in the paper and never sheared it off so either i didn't pound it all the way in when i tightened it down or that glue or whatever i don't know if there's wear in the cam sprocket or what or the sensor is not the right size but it didn't eat the uh paper off so i took it out and i'm like well heck with it so i took the paper off and yeah that paper was on there good like it wasn't gonna pop off or anything and so i'm like well if i ruin this sensor you know i grind a little bit off the end of it with the cam sprocket or whatever i'm getting a new one so i put it back in and i hooked it all up and sure enough it fired out of all the injectors that stupid paper was the cause of our problem so it wouldn't let the magnet read so right now i've still got it in there because i can take that out with this all together and we know that it fires the injectors at least somewhat so now that we've got this the leaks all figured out here i'm going to put this all back together well i'm going to put the harness on quick verify we still have fuel coming out of the injectors then put the intake on see if it runs and if it runs okay i'm just gonna leave it if it doesn't we'll put the other cam sensor on and go from there but i think we we got it nailed down as cam sensor anyway yeah so yeah here i'll give an example so i just need to hear priming and you can hear it's got full prime so it's sending it back out the return line because this is a return system with a regulator if you ever have hard starting, always check this regulator. Pull the vacuum line off. There should not be fuel in here. This should be dry. And what will happen is these will fail and let fuel pass the, uh, I don't know if it's like a, it's diaphragm. It's a diaphragm in here, I believe. And it'll, the diaphragm dries out and it lets fuel pass it, which obviously now you aren't regulating pressure properly, which causes the fuel rail pressure to be wrong. So you don't get enough fuel to your injectors, which causes a failed start or a hard start. But ours is good. So we're going to, I think we're going to send her. I think we're going to send her. I'm still suspect of this one, but I think it's just got wet fuel on it. I'm going to watch it a few more times. Anyway, I'm going to do that. Verify this is good and put it somewhat back together. Updates, guys. All right, so the stupid space, 100% was the problem. So I got this all hooked up. I watched it fire on these three and these two. Wouldn't fire on this one. So I took my, my multimeter and I put it in here and I'm like, well, there's no voltage. And if you look in there, um, the pins are all gone in it. So now we got a bad pigtail. So I'm going to pull this rubber piece back. I'm going to probably cut it like right here. And I'm going to splice it inside this rubber so so it uh, is sealed ideally. We're, in, we're spliced in here somewhere. But I've got that whole harness and I can pull the pigtail off. Here, this is what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to have those little connectors in there. And apparently they're not present. So darn bands just fight me every step of the way. So, fuel problems fixed, I think, as soon as we get this working. Because then I took a working injector off and I verified I was getting, you know, 12 volts to it or whatever. It was putting voltage to the, the injector and I watched them all fire besides that one. So, we're going to swap that over and then verify that injector fires with the other five of his friends. And uh, then we're, we're good for the, I don't know, I don't even know this, like, what, take four, five, six? Anyway, I've done this before. Like, I've done this exact rebuild on another 3.3. Actually, I've done it on a couple of them. And I've never had them fight me like this. Never. And it's the same thing for all of them. For the, this, this rebuild on this 90, you can apply this to your, your 91s, you know, your, I don't know, I think the 3.3s go back to like 87. So you can apply it from 87 all the way up to about 
2000. And from 2000 forward, they changed the intake design just a little bit. And even then, this it's essentially the same. They, uh, I think they what they moved the thermostat over here, and it's a plastic intake, so you get more horsepower. I think it's like 30 more horsepower or something. But essentially, it's the same same sort of deal. So, yeah, I'm gonna fix that the right way. It'll it'll be good. I'll do it. I'll do it fine. Um, I should have a uh, heat shrink. Should have is the the keyword there, but we'll make it work. We will make it work. Might not have to splice yet. Look what I found. Uh, when I popped this uh, piece off to pop the nectar off, look what was in there. They're intact. So I'm gonna try put them back and just run it because. That's the right way to do it, not the crimp job I was going to do. I know how to do it the right way. Do I care? If it doesn't leak fuel, no, I don't. If it doesn't fire, I can fix that. But if it starts on fire, that's where I have a problem. So, cool. We might be able to just put them back in. I don't know. Maybe it's for me. So the way I have unhooked them is just yank the wires and... I think that was what uh, did me in here, is it pulled them out of the socket. Nice. So, maybe, maybe do it the right way. And I think, I think if you pop like a screwdriver in here, they're just held in by this little wire here. So if you, maybe if you pull that loose, it'll just come out. I don't know. No, no, I don't care. It's always worked to just yank them. But like I said, this fan has been putting up an absurd fight. I win. You lose. I mean, technically we both win, right? Right? Yep, all six are firing. So I was able to press those back in and get this rubber over it. So I know to look there if we have any issues in the future with that. But um, we should be fine. That should be okay. So now... We know injectors are firing. I know I'm getting 12 volts here because I tested it. This should work. And if it doesn't work, I fuck something up in the timing. I don't think I did that because it cranks and feels like it has compression. Sounds like it does. So I think I did good. At least I did that part right. The the really important part. But... Okay, and then I got to fix that vacuum line I broke when I was yanking the intake back out. Um, I got some rubber line. I'm just going to run a... Oh, sorry, you can't see. I'm just going to run a patch. I'm going to put a rubber line to that. Should be no problem. Apparently, this one... And, I mean, it's not even... I must have, like, yanked it or hooked it because it's not even brittle. Honestly, it's surprising that the vacuum lines on this fan are not, like, brittle at all. Like, they're all pliable. Usually, it's just snap. And then you're running all rubber lines to everywhere and zip tying them in places and making a vacuum harness from scratch. So, yeah, ECM's not dead. It all works. Timing's probably good. I think we're gonna win today. Finally, finally. I thought I would have had a running last night. <laughs> Actually, I thought I would have had a running a week ago, and then a week before that, and then yeah, that's how those projects go. Never do this on your main rig if you want to go to work on Monday. So, now if you had Monday off, you'd have got it done, you know, the first day. But if you have to work on Monday, it'll never fail that you will not have it ready. So, always have a backup rig when you do stuff like this or a plan or something or take a sick day. You're sick, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Sick. I'm going to tuck this all back in. Okay, so be careful not to pull on those. And I don't trust it now. Yeah, and like even like this plastic, I don't know. This vehicle must have been kept somewhere nice, like climate controlled-ish for a while. Because like this plastic this stuff is all pliable too. It honestly amazes me. Makes my life easier. Don't have to replace it.
I see even this is fighting me. Like, this should not be that difficult. Get the hell in there. Okay. Got we there we go. We won. We won. You lose once again. Cool. So I'm happy. Yes. Yes. Let's go. We're going to call this take five. We're going to call this take five. All right, guys. I think I got everything hooked up. We got the ignition all done, all the vacuum lines. I got that one repaired with a splice. I got the new PVC on. Airbox is on. Fuel rail is tightened down. Intake is tightened down. Bracket on the back is in. Vacuum lines hooked up here, the two there, the three here. O2 sensors plugged in and the other sensor on that. The I, I don't know if it's a map sensor on the bottom of there, the intake that's hooked up. Got that line in. I verified, and I'm gonna verify again. Number one is hooked into the middle here because it's 315 and then 246. Hook the battery up. Leave that loose for now. I think we're good. That way I can pull it quick if I need to. It should run. Please run. It's running. I don't think I've got oil pressure, but I don't know. I don't know if that's working. Kind of sounds like it doesn't have oil pressure. I don't know if it's got oil pressure. I think it's got oil pressure, guys. But it's also a new gauge. I don't know if the gauge is working. We're also running on battery in the alternator, so. Um, huh. Might be worth popping the front valve cover off and just kind of looking. Because it's got a tick to it, like it doesn't have oil pressure. I mean, it's got oil in it. Smelling oil pressure switch hooked up. Yeah, it's plugged in. Hmm. I don't want to run it too long. I mean, I'm pretty sure I got the oil pump engaged to it, to the crank that is. I'm gonna have to knit this off. That's gonna catch this wire. It sounds like it runs, I mean, it's firing good. Like it's in time. Hmm. That, great. All right, I'm gonna look into it a little more. We'll uh, see if I can't diagnose whether or not we get oil pressure. If not, I'll see what we can do. All right, guys, I just went and I fired it up again. And now we're, we got plenty of oil pressure. I, when I turned the key this time, the gauge kind of reset. And 
And I thought it always had a little bit of a tick before anyway. But, uh, I think we got oil pressure. I think we're good. And I think it's just, motor's a little clanky. Um, and it's actually kind of getting quieter. I'm going to let it run for a little bit. I think the battery's going to go dead here because we don't have an alternator on it. But I think we're okay. It's running. I think we're fine. I think we got oil pressure. And that's way better than it was before I changed the oil and did all the sensors and everything. So I think we're okay. I still don't trust this. The gauge is kind of iffy, but it's giving me feedback. And it's getting quieter. So I think we're okay. Running right now. I'm gonna put a little bit of RPMs to it, just a little bit. I just want to see if that gauge follows it. Sounds like we're running on all six. I think. She's a little clanky. And I, don't, I bet you that'll go away with a heat cycle. It sounds like a lifter. I mean. coolant burn all that moisture out all right well I'm gonna shut her down actually I think I'm gonna I'm gonna back it off the ramps and then so I because everything I can do is all top end now so I'm gonna back it off the ramps here and then I'm gonna continue work on the alternator all right guys mission success uh, it runs it's in time um, I let it warm up a little bit, but I don't have the water pump hooked up, so I filled the rad with coolant, so it kind of drained in, but, um, I don't want to overheat it naturally, obviously. So, I'm going to take, I'm going to unhook the alternator, unhook the battery before I do that, and then I'm going to put the bracket in so I can put the idler on and then put the alternator in, and then I can put the serpentine belt on, and it's done as far as the engine goes for now, until that thing blows up. I think it's just a little clanky, and I'm sure with a little bit of driving, it'll quiet up. Sticky lifter is what I think most of it is. So, not being driven very much, and then on crappy oil that was in it. We'll uh, we'll do some couple of frequent changes probably. So. Not that the, the inside of the engine didn't look that bad, so I think it was just ready for an oil change. And I'm sure it was beat on its whole life. So, but hey, it's in there. And I mean, hey, when this blows up, it's not that bad. They're not that bad. And I mean, I wouldn't let it blow up. I'd let it go to knock, knock, knock land. And uh, then I would take the block out and probably maybe redo it. Or maybe I would use the block in there. I don't know. I don't think I'd let it blow a rod through the side. But these are easy to get out. What motor mount? Motor mount at the bottom trans mount there um maybe takes the maybe take the intake off some of your accessories pull your hoses off and it'll come right out i that one came out no problem so and this one's the, that was a second gen the first gen so you got even more room up under here the second gen so you don't have that much room here with the wiper cowling so this one will be cake but i want to say it's good and that i didn't do all that work for nothing
We'll see. We'll see when it blows up 10 miles down the road. I want to get that on so I can get this up, and then I want to kind of test drive it around a little bit. 